असलम एवरी वन जैसा कि आप लोगों को मालूम है कि एन जे डिजिटल टी वी हमेशा आप लोगों के लिए बहुत इंटरेस्टिंग और बहुत एक्सक्लूसिव चीज़ें लेकर आता है इस बार भी मैं आपके साथ हाजिर हूँ एक ऐसा एक्सक्लूसिव इंटरव्यू लेकर जो बहुत ही ज़्यादा इंटरेस्टिंग है एक ऐसी पर्सनैलिटी जिनकी स्टोरी लाइफ स्टोरी बहुत ज़्यादा इंस्पायरिंग है एक ऐसे शख्स जो यू एस मरीन ऑफिसर थे और एज आ आर्म ऑफिसर रिटायर हुए और उन्होंने अपनी तमाम जिंदगी जंगी लड़ी मुसलमानों के खिलाफ जंगी लड़ी लेकिन आखिर में वो उन्होंने खुद इस्लाम को कबूल कर लिया और वो मुसलमान हो गए ये एक्सक्लूसिव स्टोरी रिचर्ड मिकेनी की आप लोगों के साथ आज मैं शेयर करूंगा और रिचर्ड मिकेनी ने खुद हमको इस शो में ज्वाइन किया है चलिए वेलकम करते हैं रिचर्ड मिकेनी को वालेकुम सर I am so humble and so honored that I have got this chance to speak to you today. Ah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. Sir, so you're most of the people they know about you, uh, and our viewers, I'm sure that most of them they already know because uh, uh, your story is very inspirational. And uh, uh, when I saw it first time, it really touched my heart, and uh, i was i was my my eyes were wet i was almost crying that uh, because i heard these stories uh, in a previous time in past times uh, but i haven't seen anyone uh, in this era that it has that kind of uh, intense story uh, so sir first of all i would like to ask you sir please tell us about your childhood how was your childhood um what well, was difficult um i i kind of made it that way um i uh i grew up with divorced parents um i lived with my mother in the beginning and uh from there i uh uh just like any other kid i guess i i went to school and uh played with my friends and um you know i ended up getting into a lot of trouble um a lot of trouble i barely went to school um mm. ran the streets um and then i uh ended up moving to my dad's house uh right. he took me in when i was 12 years old and uh i ended up staying with him until i was uh 17 and then i ran away I couldn't handle okay. his problems. So. All right. Uh, so you were 17 years old at that time. So where where did you go then? Uh I was on the streets for a couple months, and then I went back to my mom's house. And right. because my mom was having her own issues, um my aunt and uncle uncle took me in. Hmm. And I finished school but I never graduated. Uh, never got a high school diploma. I got a GED in Japan when I was stationed in Japan. Uh, All right. Yeah, uh, basically just a certificate that saying that uh, I finished high school. So, but uh, right. And then I went into the military. Went into the Marine Corps. Yeah, you went to the Marine Corps. So what? What was the? What was the? Sorry. That was my dog. I'm sorry. एजे I I I I realized that I would in, end up either dead or in prison. And I knew the only way to get out of this life was to leave this life. And hmm. the only option I had was to join the military. Oh. Right. So, and of course I joined the Marine Corps. All right. So, uh you have been deployed in many countries uh, to perform your duties for the America 
and mm -hmm. so to tell us about that that uh, how many countries and what countries you have been deployed it's easier to say what continents i have not been on all right uh, the only continent i have not been on is antarctica okay yeah and i used to tell people uh that until they put penguins on the terrorist watch list i probably wouldn't go there all right hmm so almost you have been to all the places then and uh, uh, what, what was your experience while you were serving the armed forces? Uh, I know that uh, it might, you, have, you must have been a tough guy, you, uh, you know, you are a um, Marine Corps and then uh, an armed officer. What, uh, like, what, how was the life? Like, what was your daily routine and uh, what was going on in your life? I just want to know that while you were serving uh, your duties. Well, I mean, if we were back in country, uh, back home, basically we called it, uh, just a normal day, you get up, you uh, do uh, physical training, uh, exercise, uh, you'll have classes, you might go, we called it the backyard, we'd go out there for maybe the day or mm -hmm. days, and we would just do maneuvers, uh, and then we would come back and about 4.30 every day, 4.30, 5 o'clock, we would uh, get off work, basically, and the rest of the time's ours. That's a normal so you, day. All right. So during that time, you uh, you didn't think of uh, religion or uh, uh, you were looking for uh, the, you know, the, to find the truth, to find uh, the reality of God. You were not thinking about that at all. No, I... I, I claimed to be a Christian when I first joined the military. All right. Um, after I had been to my first hotspot and got shot at for the very first time, I knew or I felt that this God that's explained in the Bible doesn't exist. So I claimed the title of being agnostic after that. I believe that there was something that created all of this, but not as it's described in a religious text. I think you froze. So can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know if you could still hear me. I just sent you a, a message. <laughs> Are you still there? <laughs> all right. So, uh, yeah, that, that is the that? problem. Of, no, I didn't. I, uh, okay. When I asked you the, that last question, then I didn't. So should I repeat that question? Yeah, yeah, please, please. Yeah, okay. okay. So, um, yeah. So Richard, uh, I want to know that during that time when you were um, spending your military life, so uh, did you ever think about of the religion that you are finding the truth or you want to know the reality of God? Well, as far as Islam is concerned, actually, I really didn't even I guess the best thing I could say is I didn't even really know it existed <laughs> I mean I just right. didn't you know didn't know growing up uh, mm. but I you know being an American uh, growing up in this society I, I did uh, learn about Christianity uh, I claimed to be a Christian at the time of when I joined the military right. uh, shortly after I joined uh, the first uh, hot spot that I had went to uh, where I'd seen um, people that, you know, face to face that were suffering because of war and strife. And and the first time I got shot at, um, I said, there, th there's no way there, there's no way there's a God because it not, not the one described in the Bible, because you hear these Christians talk about, you know, God's a merciful God. How's God a merciful God when all this is going on? It just. So at that point, I basically, I, I claimed to be an agnostic, believing that something created all this, but not as described right. in a religious text. Yeah. Right. So, uh, and uh, tell us that, uh, as you said, that when you retired and you, you came back to your home, after that, the hatred started? Against uh, Muslims or 
it started oh, yeah. actually before I got out. It had started a little bit before I got out because um, I, I think honestly, I kind of knew of uh, uh, I knew the end was near. I knew I was going to have to get out because I was, you know, because the, the time I had in, it just, you know, it just doesn't, you can't stay in forever, you know. Well, My desire was to die in combat. And that's what okay. really fueled the hatred because that wasn't happening at all. Oh. Uh, it, I wasn't, you know, I, I would be in situations and I would do things and, 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 and honestly, they were very stupid things, but I knew hmm. that it would probably kill me and then I could die my hero's death. That's all I wanted. And so what fueled the hatred was knowing that wasn't going to happen. All right. So, so uh, yeah, uh, that is very interesting thing that you you were like that passionate that you wanted to die as a hero for your country, right? Right. And uh, so it seems so passionate. So how did it happen that uh, a person like uh, you or the way you used to think? Mm -hmm. Suddenly, you, uh, you completely changed. You transformed uh, inside out. How did it happen? Well, at the time, I I, I had gotten out. Um, my drinking was horrible. I was drinking a half gallon of vodka, or basically like a liter of vodka every two days, uh, and that was just sitting at home drinking. If I went out, I drank more, but. It was, it, it was the fact that um, uh, I, I, I needed something. They took my wars away from me is the way I felt. Yeah. So I said, you know what? I'll create All my right. own war. I'm going to go after the Muslims that are here. So you wanted? Okay. All right. So you, so you didn't uh, you didn't want to retire or go out of the army. You still wanted to uh, continue your duties, right? Okay. Right, right. So that, uh, I got injured in Iraq in 2006, and uh, it was it, I got hurt enough to where they were forcing me out. They were medically retiring me because of my okay. injuries, and I fought it, uh, but I lost mm. and. Uh, that's, that's really what put that, that hatred on steroids. You know what I mean? It just really just, mm. oh man, fan the fire, you know? Um, right. so yeah, I did not want to get out. I, I wanted to keep doing what I was doing. And I even told them I, I, I laid in a, a hospital bed for, for a wet, for a bit. And people would come in and talk to me about, Hey, you know, they're going to retire you. You're going to get all these benefits and all these pluses. They'll give you a check every month, blah, blah, blah. And I told them, nah, nah, you can keep all that. I said, I need to go back to Iraq. And they're like, mm -hmm. why do you want to go back to Iraq? And I said, I told them very serious look on my face. I'm not done killing Muslims yet. All right. That's and after that, well, they had me see the special doctors because <laughs> they're like this. This dude just lost his mind. <laughs> so you know. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I got forced mm -hmm. out, and I didn't like it. So. All right, and then uh, when 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 you come back and. Uh, then what happened? Like how this transition happened? That you wanted to plan something against Muslims, or uh, what was your plan? Just yeah. Well, not at first. At first, it was just more that I, I just I, I couldn't stand them. I I, I, I just hated uh, Muslims. And it, if I saw a brown person. Automatically, hmm. they're a Muslim. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and we all know that's just yeah. very wrong. You know, it's a very wrong way to think. But uh, at, you know, I would go to the the, the stores, and m my wife would be hmm. a nervous wreck because you know she knew that if I encountered a Muslim, I'd go up and say something to him. Like a Muslim woman would be out at the grocery store, I'd be there with my wife. I would walk by them and s just spew profanity at them. Just 
out of the blue, right. you know. Mm. And um, but that ended up, you know, I decided that's not enough. I need mm. to do something for my country, and that's rid this right. evil, right? And that's when I started piecing together a plan and materials and uh, planning on uh, 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 hitting the local Islamic center. I think you lost you again. Okay. Hey, that's when I planned on, uh, on uh, basically um, detonating an explosive device at the local Islamic center here in, in Indiana and uh, right. uh, on a Friday when they, everybody was there and yeah, taking Friday out period. as many as I could. Yeah, taking out as many as I could. Uh, wow. uh, I mean, I had it all worked out. And I was within, you know, if I would have decided, if I would have woke up the morning and said, well, today's the day, by that night, I could, uh, I, I could have had everything in place and just wait till prayer time. Right. So, uh, I can imagine, I can imagine that how, uh, uh, how passionate you were as an officer and how, uh, how much loyal you were towards your country that you wanted to do something for that. Of course, then uh, 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 you didn't know that much about Islam at that time point, uh, at that point of time. Uh, so uh, obviously that you didn't know. Uh, but what happened then? Like from there, when you were planning to uh, harm Muslims, what made you stop? What was that moment? It was my daughter, actually. Um, she's 16 now, but she was um, she was like seven, eight years old at the time. Um, and she um, came home from school and was telling me, asking me, because she knew Dad had been around the world, so he might know who this person is, right? This lady came to pick up her son from school. And when she uh, when she came into the classroom, she was covered head to toe, right? I had on all the regalia, right? And but my you know my daughter doesn't. She was too young. She didn't understand what all that was, but it didn't make any sense to her. It was weird, you know. Um, and uh, so she came home and asked me, and I just flew off the handle. I started spewing profanity and saying all kinds of horrible things, and and basically I made the one one of the biggest bigotist statement that that you could you can make and that's i don't want my family around those people and she looked at me you know the relationship between a father and daughter are are is is a special bond at least it should be you know mm. and she looked at me and she actually questioned her love for me yes. i could see it in her eyes because her dad is has lost his mind you know, that's what, the, you know, and she just doesn't know anymore. And that hit me. Yeah. And I says, I think what I'm going to do is the right thing. But I need to make sure. I need to make sure that these people are good people. I don't think they are. But maybe these are the good Muslims that I hear about. You know, not like the rest of the Muslims, right? That's the way I looked at it. And so I said, well, the only way to do that is to go there and meet them. So I walked in on a Friday. I knew they would be, you know, most of them would be there, you know, or, or a big group would be there at least. And I could uh, talk with people and get to meet somebody. And, you know, so I went in and I introduced myself as somebody who just wanted to learn a little bit more about Islam. Right. And, and people like that are always welcomed right. into a mosque. At least, at least they should be. Uh, you know, are always welcomed. Uh, you know, yes, yes, we will talk to you in depth. And, 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 and uh, um, I walked in. There was one guy there. This was before anybody got there. And he was in the shoe room taking off his shoes. Uh, African-American gentleman. Used to play professional basketball back in the 1970s. Uh, he looked at me and he smiled and I looked at him and he said, can I help you? And I said, yeah, I want you to teach me about Islam. 
And he goes, he kind of laughed, and he says, well, how long do you got? I said, well, I got a couple hours. He said, well, we'll give it a shot. (laughs) So, uh, yeah. So I sat through the sermon, right? And uh, I I liked it. It was nice. But, you know, in my head, I'm thinking, Mm -hmm. they're just said that because I'm here, you know? And uh, I, uh, a- after it was over, they introduced me to uh, 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 another African American gentleman uh, closer to my own age, and uh, he, uh, he, we went into the library area where there was a couch there, and we sat down and we was talking, and he says, he says, hold up a minute, he says, have you ever read the Quran? I was like, I, I just looked at him and smiled, and I says, no, I haven't. Under my breath, I was saying, are you serious? Why would I read that crazy book, right? <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I was I, I was here to do I was here to learn. I was you know, regardless of my personal feelings at the time, I'm here to learn to make sure that what I'm doing is right because I know it's going to end up with me getting sentenced to death. I know I'm going to be executed for this. I just want to make sure it's the right thing. So he handed me this. He says he said he said I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to give you this advice. He said, and I think it's the best advice any Muslim can give a non-Muslim. And, and I, I think you do. I, I still say the same thing to, to other people. Read this. Come back when you have questions. And I did. Right. Yeah. It wasn't during Ramadan, so I was yeah. actually there more than most of the Muslims were. Because <laughs> I would come back constantly. I started getting invited to people's houses, you know, for dinners and stuff right. and uh, getting to meet people. And, and mm-hmm. while, I was, while I was in that library, I was sitting on the couch, and this guy come up to me, who I later ended up becoming really good friends with, him and his family, just wonderful people. Um, he, he came, and he sat down at my feet, and he hugged my leg, and he started crying, talking about the love of Islam. And I'm like, man, either this guy is off his lid, or there's something to this, Right? And I've always been interested in religion because of the fact that, uh, you know, all religions have have caused people to do incredible things, both bad and good, you know, uh, through the the use of the text, the the misinterpretations and the right interpretations for good and bad. Uh, But but but, you know, so it's always kind of interests me a little bit. Religion did. Um, and you know, I'm thinking, man, I, I okay, mm-hmm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this serious, man. I'm gonna take this serious, and I'm gonna read this Quran, and I'm gonna get something from it. And I hoped, I hoped to myself that I would read this book, and I would see exactly what I needed to complete my mission. That I was gonna find that nasty stuff in there that would help me to to justify what I was gonna do. And I read and I read. And what really started the change was when I come to 532, Surah 5, 32nd Ayat. And it was, you know, it's the one that explains, you know, to kill, kill one person is to kill all of humanity. And then later on, it says to save one human being is to save all of humanity, right? I was like, now, wait, wait a minute. I was trying to be an intelligent thinker at the time, and so I, I, I thought, I thought on this. I sat on this for, for, for a while, and I just thought and thought and thought, and I'm like, wait a minute. This makes no sense because this is their book. This is what they try to live their life by as best they can. But what this is telling me is totally contradictory to what I just seen, what I just took part in, what I was a part of. Because, you know, I could, you know, it, it, where, it, it, you know, it also says in the Quran, you, you know, you don't harm women, you don't harm children, you don't harm the elderly, you don't destroy religious structures, not Islamic structures, religious structures. Well, the guys that I was up against, I seen them do all that within an hour. <laughs> So it wasn't making any sense to me. So, 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 so obviously, you know, the light bulb comes on and says, you know what? Those people do not represent Islam. They represent something else, yes. but not Islam. 
So I got more into reading and more into reading. And, and it, unlike the Bible, you know, uh, and it didn't matter which version I used because we, we all know there's like thousands of versions of the Bible. Uh, it never made sense to me. It was, to me, it was a good story. And that was it. You know, it was like a novel, mm-hmm. you know. But the Quran touched me. You know, you hear, you know, well, here in America, you know, we hear about Christians say, you know, that, that the word of God, the Bible, you know, as they call it, as they refer to it, um, touches them in a way. Well, it never did touch me. It never did. Uh, even when I was trying to be a Christian or whatever. Uh, but the Quran, man, right from the get go, right from El Fataha. I was like, man, this sounds yeah. like the Lord's Prayer, you know, because Christianity has the Lord's Prayer what's called the Lord's Prayer. And it, this is along the same lines, man. This is like saying the same thing, you know? And, mm-hmm. and, and I'm like, wow, hold on, man. So as I got more involved, more involved, I finally decided it's time. It's time. I was wrong about everything that I thought, everything that I felt, and every way that I acted. I want to be a Muslim. Mm-hmm. So I went back to the to the right. mosque, and I went to some 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 of the older gentlemen, you know, which for lack of a better term, we'll call them elders, you know, and and uh, yeah. I uh, I said, hey, I said I want to take shahada, and it was real funny because they look at me, no smiles, no nothing, they look at me and they look at each other, and they look back at me, and almost instantly, both of them together said nah (laughs) yeah they said nah (laughs) and and they said they 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 said they said brother you have more to learn which Mm. i didn't discount because we're talking we're talking eight weeks here man since the first day i stepped foot into the islamic center eight weeks later i go back to tell him i want to take shahada that was the change it happened you know, I yeah, but he, I engrossed my whole started. life into yeah. It, during those eight weeks, I engrossed every every minute I had to learning about Islam. Mm. Uh, so you know, but yeah, I was still very ignorant. I you know, and I still have a lot to. We all have a lot to learn, and, and that's what I told him. I said, "But yeah. brothers, don't we all have a lot to learn?" And they and they said, "Well, all right, come on." <laughs> so, uh, so so I took shot, and you know, the law, and I became a Muslim. And uh, it was it was it was pretty surreal, man. It was like you know when I was I was there in front of the whole congregation. I did it at Juma, and and I was there, and it just like I broke out into like a cold sweat, and it's like a weight just got lifted off my shoulders, man. It was just oh, I I don't know how else to describe it. Right. You know that, uh, mashallah. You you are so lucky that you have felt that feeling. You know, uh, oh. which you are just describing us that when you took your shahada, so it's such a beautiful feeling, isn't it? I, and, I uh, you know, I, I almost wish that we could like keep doing it. We we keep taking shahada, which in a way we do because we always say la ilaha all the time. You know, Muhammadan Rasulullah. We always say that all all the time. We do. So I guess in a way I, I do take it, but it was just that that moment, man. It's like I'll never get that back, that that one moment. But but mm-hmm. hum, hum I don't need to get it back because I did it, and that's what's important. Hmm. Hmm. Right. So uh, now you have taken your shahada, you have become Muslim, but you were living a different life before. And after your shahada, obviously you have friends, you have family, or um, I'm assuming that they are not Muslim as well. Uh, they were not Muslim right. at that time. I don't know about now. So uh, mm-hmm. uh, how did it affect your life, your personal life? Well, uh, as far as friends go, um, I can honestly say that people that would be considered my true friends um they're no longer around they um 
they they uh, they're all dead. Um, I had a lot of buddies, I guess you could say is the best way to put it. Just uh, acquaintances that were you know I was pretty close to. Uh, I wouldn't call them my true friends, but you know uh, I kind of lost that. You know, I kind of lost that because, and 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 it's no fault of theirs, uh, really. Uh, it wasn't a decision that they said, "Oh man, you're a Muslim now. I don't want nothing to do with you." They, they didn't do that, but it was the it's the lifestyle, you know, because we was right. all into partying and drinking and you know, womanizing. Well, it, I can't do that anymore. <laughs> I don't want to do that anymore. You know what I mean? I, I I'm too old yeah. for that. <laughs> and and and. And, uh, you know, and now I have this religion that, that, that forbids that. And, and I want to be as true as I can. Yeah. And uh, so we just lost contact. Uh, That's my one. family, on the other hand, was a different story. Because like most husbands, right, I don't tell my wife anything. Huh. <laughs> and, and, uh, <laughs> right. and, and she had no idea. She had no idea about any. She just knew that I didn't like Muslims, but she knew I'd been going to the to, to the Islamic Center and meeting with these other Muslims, and she was getting worried because she thought I had something that I was planning, like blowing up the place, right? Which she never, she didn't know about okay, that she was plan. Thinking at that point. Yeah, she because nobody knew about my All actual right. plan. No one knew. Um, and my wife didn't know until the FBI came to the house. Um, okay. Yeah. And so well, why did they come? Why? Did they... Well, because I, you know, I started, I started, uh, I, I, you know, I talked to a few people about what I, what I went through and this, that, and the other. And, and they said, man, that's a, that's an interesting story, man. I, that needs to be told, you know? All right. So okay. I, so I started telling people, you know, in, in groups, you know, about this and, and, and you know, because they would ask me because I, I, I actually started going to college at that time. And, you know, I would I, I would sometimes have to skip out of class or, you know, go to class and then leave and come back because I had to go do my prayer. Right. The professors were all cool with that. Right. So that was fine. But, uh, you know, they, they would ask me, say, hey, man, I. That's weird, man. You're a Muslim, man. I, you know, and I said, eh, I'll give it to you. Yeah, it, yeah, it's a little weird. Here's this white veteran, you know, this white guy, military veteran, yeah. you know, is a Muslim. What? <laughs> I and yeah, it would start the conversation, right? And so we would talk and talk in groups. And I guess uh, what had happened is somebody had heard, overheard me talking, and thought I needed to be reported. Oh. So that's how the FBI showed up at the house. But at that point, I was already a Muslim. And contrary to popular belief, I had gotten rid of everything. But contrary to popular belief, now that I'm a Muslim, I had no need for that stuff. <laughs> I had no need for the right. explosives. <laughs> right. uh, so, you know, there was no, there was no evidence uh, to mm -hmm. anything. Um, right. You know, they came in. They brought a bomb dog through my house. Um, and... You know, I didn't. I never kept anything here anyway. Uh, that that's kind of stupid. I it, that's no. But uh, and that's when my wife found out about my actual plan. Um, what was her reaction then? She, she, she was. She must have been surprised. She was. She was. Uh, let's just say that was a long night in my house that night. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> that was a very long I night. But, you know, it was, but it was, it, it's actually funny. I don't know if she likes me telling this story or not, but I have to, because it's just so funny, you know, her reaction, because she had no idea I was going to yeah. take Shahada, right? So I come home after Juma. I'm a Muslim now, man. You know, I plop down on the couch, like I just got home from a hard day's work, right? And I got a big old smile on my face. She goes, so did everything go okay? Like, Oh, don't tell me he did something, <laughs> you know, and he's sitting there with that, 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 that cat grinning on his face. Like, Hmm, I just did this, you know? And, and, uh, I said, well, I said, uh, I took my Shahada. I'm a Muslim. She did. She goes, you show what? <laughs> I said, I took my Shahada and as best I could, you know, it, being a new Muslim, I tried to explain Shahada and 
what that all entailed, you know, and the only thing I can compare it to was similar to, you know, uh, baptism with Christianity, you know, where you get baptized and now you've been forgiven your sins and you go on about your life, right? Try to live a good life. Um, that was really the only, only, uh, thing I had to compare with. So I, I did that. And, uh, and, uh, she goes, she's, she's totally distraught right now because she's, this just hit her right in the face and she had no idea any of this was even in my mind. She puts her hand on her hips and she goes, I'm going to tell you something right now. I'm not putting anything on my head. <laughs> right. <laughs> she was serious. She goes, I'm not putting anything on my head. I'm not oh, covering my hair. Nothing. Yeah. 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 And I said, well, um, you're that's not funny. a Muslim. So that's not even a conversation, really. Mm-hmm. And, and so we, we talked a little bit more and she said, and another thing, and I mean this. If you want more than one wife, I won't be one of them. <laughs> Women are, so, are the same, I guess. No matter which part of the world you are, they are the same. Yeah. Yeah. So her first concern was about that covering uh, the head and the second yeah. one about the wife. Okay. <laughs> well, she didn't have any prejudice, but of course, all she knew was, you know, what she had, what she had seen and experienced that, you know, all Muslim women wear a headscarf, which is not true. Yeah. And, 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 uh, they, they're made to wear the headscarf, which is, well, it's not supposed to be true. We, we know in different countries, the government does make it a, a law that women have to cover up. Yeah. And, you know, I, that, that's a whole other subject to touch on. But, but um, you know, it's not supposed to be uh, mandatory. It's not supposed to be an obligation that you, that you do. And if you do do it, you do it on your own as a desire to be more pious, right? So... Uh, so, um, uh, right. but yeah, so things just kind of went, went that way. Um, and it was hard. It was hard, uh, mm-hmm. at first for me. So uh, after you and anyone else from your family, they, uh, they revert back to Islam, anyone from your family? Um, yeah, they, uh, my, my mom or my, uh, dad and my stepmother, my, uh, my, um, uh, my mother had passed. Um, uh, so m- my dad and my stepmom, um, uh, I was on the phone with them and they says, they said, um, we want you to know that you are welcome in our house anytime, but you have to leave that Islam stuff back in Indiana. All right. To this day, I don't really know what that means. <laughs> so I just never went back to their house. I talked to them on the phone, but I ha- hadn't seen them for quite some time. Um, hmm. And uh, uh, because I, I can't, I can't not be a Muslim. I mean, that's what I decided to to be, and that's what I am. And I can't just not be that. It's like me saying, "Well, you know, I'm okay here, but if I go there, I got to be a different color." You, you can't change that. <laughs> you know, you are what you are, right? And and yeah, so um, so I hadn't seen them for about probably going on four years. Um, and uh, they only live three hours away. So it's not like okay. they're on the other side of the world, right? I mean, they live three hours away, but I hadn't seen them for almost four years because of this. Yeah. And, you know, it was, it was, it was hard, but you know, it, I, I have to, you know, I have to be true to myself and I ultimately I have to be true to, to Islam and, and I can't be phony like that, you know? Um, and so, um, right. you know, time went on and, um, when that, the video came out, the secret life of Muslims, you know, I, I, I found out, I was told mm. that it was going to be on network television. It's not a TV show. It's an internet series. And it only airs on the internet. Uh, but what had happened was, before mm. my episode come out, about a week and a half, two weeks before that, 
that uh, white supremacists went into those uh, two mosques in, in uh, 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 Christ Church, New Zealand, and shot up the place, killed a bunch of Muslims. Okay. And when he heard that, he says, yeah. he says, automatically, I came to his mind. And he took my video to CBS, hmm. the network here in the United States, and it went on the oh. Sunday morning program, Sunday morning CBS, or CBS Sunday morning. And they aired it hmm. uh, very first thing in the, in the show. Uh, and so I called my parents out of respect, you right. know, that, hey, it's right. going to be on, you know. Um, so uh, just wanted to let you know, uh, you know, because I didn't want them to, like, go to a store and, uh, you know, them somebody come up to them and go, what's up with your crazy son? <laughs> you know, <laughs> I just, you know, so so I told them and they and they they watched it. About a half hour afterwards, I'm on my computer and I'm looking at comments and stuff like that to, to the video. And they, my stepmom called me. She calls me and, and she's in tears. She's crying. And she goes, your father and I just want to tell you we are so, so sorry. We had no idea you were going through so much stuff. You're welcome in our house just the way you are. So, alhamdulillah, you know. They still don't like Muslims, but I'm allowed to go visit. <laughs> oh, it so, does good. That's good. Yeah. So. Yeah. So that that was quite interesting as well because it 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 was a challenge itself as well because not meeting your parents, your dad, your stepmom for four years, four years uh, is a long time. So, uh, but but that is the thing when. Uh, when some difficulty comes in your life, then the ease is there afterwards so the ease came to your life as well uh, i'm really happy about that and then uh, uh, when the, all these had happened now you have started uh, public uh, speaking and uh, you have started uh, preaching about islam or what you are doing because mm -hmm. i've heard that you have become the president of the same islamic center uh former president um Former, okay, right. I served the term, and it came up for election again, uh, and everybody wanted me to run for re-election, uh, and really I was going unopposed anyway. It was mainly just a fi uh, fun uh, formality, but I told them, I said, you know what, I can't run uh, because right. I was uh, finishing my degree at, at university, and uh, um, I had to do an internship. And uh, uh, it was just going to take away too much time. And I didn't want to shortchange the Islamic Center like that. I, I, you know, I wanted to do the right thing by them. So, um, so um, after, after Juma services, it was, you know, the duty of the president or somebody from the board to get up and make announcements, whatever needs to be said and this, that, and the other. And um, uh, so I, stood up and I nominated somebody and right. it, they were really taken aback by it. They, they really, at, at first were, it was hard to sell to them uh, because it was a woman that I nominated. Okay. The woman I nominated is an Afghani woman um, uh, as a, it has been in the United States probably uh, a good portion of her life. I know uh, she came here with no education. She has a college degree now. Uh, her husband is a prominent doctor locally. Uh, well, actually, her whole family, except for one son, is all doctors, um, uh, in including including one of the girls. <laughs> uh, so, you know, they've all they've all uh, 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 expressed the, the the desire to help others. I guess is the best way to put it. I'm trying to right, get the light right. situated here. Um, so I nominated her because number one, she has such a foothold in the local community as far as the local government, hmm. uh, different organizations that she belongs to, and one that she actually spearheads is she founded an organization called Awaken uh, hmm. Afghan Women and Kids Education and Necessities is what it is. She's she's built like two schools in Afghanistan uh, right. through fundraising. Right. Mm -hmm. 
So, I mean, this woman can definitely run an Islamic center in Muncie, Indiana. There's no, 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 no doubt in my mind. And so I nominated her. And what I would do as president, though, I would go into the library area and, right. you, you know, just hang out there for a while after Juma in case anybody had any concerns or, or, or complaints or whatever. You know, they could voice them to me and we can, you know, I, I can't fix it if I don't know what's broke, right? So you, mm -hmm. you have to tell me. So I would make myself available like that. <laughs> and so when I went in there, I, I stood next to the bookshelf, and uh, uh, the older brothers, the elders, they come walking in there, and I, 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 I said they kind of looked like they was the blood and the crypts <laughs> walking in there. And they go, yeah. they go, brother, that's a little progressive, isn't it, to, to nominate a woman to be president of the Islamic Center? I said, absolutely not. They said, what do you mean? I said, why do I have to keep telling you guys your history? <laughs> I said, who was the first Muslim? Khadija. Mm. Right? True. Who is the best known scholar in all of Islam? Aisha. Uh, Aisha. Yeah. You know, so, uh, I mean, right. Right. and Most who of found... Are from, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, her name's all over. It, you know, the Hadiths and, and, and Sunnahs and, I mean, everything. You know, she was the most knowledgeable one. And the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he made it that way. He made her that way. He, he gave her that knowledge. And, and, and then who, who founded the first university slash library known to mankind? A Muslim woman. Yeah. I didn't know about that. What, yeah, what, what I, was her name? She was a, she was a princess, uh, actually. Oh, my gosh. I can't remember what country she was from. I do not remember her name. Okay. I, I, yeah, I read it in, in uh, one, of my, one of my books, one of my historical books. Um, so, okay. you know, I, says, I, I said, no, so, yeah. so I said, you know, I'm, being, I'm not being progressive. I'm actually being regressive. I'm going back to the way it was. You know, to where the women had that respect and had, the, you know, and, and and because, you know, as time has went on, we have seen it throughout Islam where women have lost a lot due to politics and governments and, you know, this, that and the other. And, you know, and it has nothing to do with Islam. It has to do with culture. And but I, I don't like it and I don't stand for it. And and, you know, w women are called, you, you know, your wife. That's half your dean, you know. Right. Paradise, yep. you know, is beneath your mother's feet. I mean, these are women we're talking about. So how are we going to keep them back, or hold them back from doing anything when, when we are supposed to look so highly upon them, you know? Hmm. So right. anyway, she took over, and she has done a wonderful job, uh, better than I could have done. I mean, you know, because she has that she has that insight. She has that that hold on on so much here locally, you know. Right. Right. That's great. So um, it has been so wonderful to talk to you. And uh, I'm really humbled and honored that I have talked to you. I, I don't know how to express my feelings. I'm not that much uh, express uh, full, you know, that um, I tell you, but uh, it, it has been great. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and one last thing I would, uh, I would like you to tell our viewers that uh, the people, especially the people uh, who have misconceptions about Islam, who see Islam through the eyes of media mm -hmm. and who has, uh, you know, they have got blocked in their head because you have been gone through all these stages, what would you advise to them? To those people like, you know, that who, who just see through uh, Muslims and Islam through media, what media tells them? Mm -hmm. what, what's your advice to them? What should they do? First thing, turn off your TV. First thing. <laughs> that important. Yeah. And, and then pick up a book, hopefully the Quran. Mm. If you want to learn about something, anything, you have to go to the source. You can't get secondhand knowledge. 
you know, uh, and and we see that a lot in in, in 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 Islam, especially, you know, and that's how we end up with these terrorist organizations. You know, we get this these people who who don't have an education and can't read, which we also saw in the early church. Uh, the populace was ignorant; they could not read, they could not write, so they would go to the services, and the and the uh, priest would tell them what the Bible says and would tell them what it meant instead of them figuring it out for themselves, which is something that the prophet told us to do. He wanted us to learn, you know? Um, and, and so, so that is the, the big two. Turn off your TV, pick up a Quran, and just read it. Find a Muslim and ask them a question, you know? That's, that's the best advice I can give anybody. Hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Richard. Uh, it has been great uh, that we have been talking for a while now and uh, you have given all the answers of my questions. So thank you so much for that. And thank you so much for joining NJ Digital TV. Hopefully, we will invite you some other day as well on a different topic, maybe this time. So uh, I'm really grateful. Thank you so much for joining us. Anytime. Thank you so much. And may Allah bless all your efforts, brother. Thank you, sir. Nisham. And yours as well. Yours as well. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Ji, dosto, do ya ab dekh rahe the Richard McKinney ki story. Ji, viewers, to ye ab log dekh rahe the Richard McKinney ki interesting exclusive chat. मेरे साथ NJ Digital TV पर मैं हूँ आपका होस्ट अधीर जब्बार और मिलूँगा आपसे फिर अपने नेक्स्ट एपिसोड में तब तक अपना बहुत ख्याल रखिएगा टेक केयर एंड अल्लाह हाफ़िज़